is Jason Lake. I'm founder and uh, CEO of Complexity Gaming, um, one of North America's more historic brands, I guess you could say. And uh, I've, I guess I've been at this for about eight years now. We started in uh, 2003. So, like you just said, you've been around for eight years. So you've been everywhere from CPL, CGS, MLG, <laughs> all over the place. Can you compare um, the state of MLG, the event right now, to all your past experience with major events? Yeah, I got to tell you, I was hanging out with some uh, what I like to call the old school guys um, at a party last night, and uh, we were talking about the 2004 CPLs and 2005 and and ESWCs, and um, you know, after the whole CGS uh, episode, uh, I think esports is really kind of in a, a desert type situation. And uh, I walk into MLGs these days, you know, to see thousands and thousands of people cheering and holding up signs and giant lines for autographs. And I almost kind of want to pinch myself because, you know, those of us that have been in esports for a long time, uh, we've been disappointed quite a few times and it's really been a roller coaster. And now we look out and we see events like this and we're like, holy shit, you know, it's like, have we really made it? And this event is spectacular. Just the energy of being at an event like this and like I said, the long lines for autographs and the excitement uh, of the fans is really something a lot of us have worked a very long time and spent a very large amount of money uh, to get to this point. So it's a very good weekend and I'm very excited to be here. Great. Um, so recently Complexity partnered with MVP and the way MVP put it um, in some of the interviews was that you approached them. So I guess what I'm wondering is why MVP and how and why did the deal get done? Um, well, like I, I'll probably say a few times, I'm going to be pretty old. I'm going to be 40 years old in about three weeks. Um, I'm going to Hawaii on Wednesday to uh, celebrate my birthday. And <clears throat> one thing about running any kind of successful business or, or organization is realizing where your skill sets lie and where they don't. And as I get older, um, I know that I don't have all the answers and I don't understand the scenes as well as I did maybe eight years ago. So we have consultants. <clears throat> in different games um, that we pay or you know take to dinner just <laughs> each and everything in between and our consultants were coming to us saying MVP is a great team a lot of younger players that are coming up they've got you know Dong Rei Gu and uh, if you want to make a move in that direction you know you want to go talk to them so the co-owner of uh, Complexity Jason Bass um, approached Choi, the manager of MVP, and you know said, "We just want to open a dialogue with you. We want to be straight up front. Would you be interested in you know some kind of partnership or buyouts or whatever? Just like, would you be interested in talking?" And it went real quick. He was super excited, wonderful guy, and um, you know the partnership right now is Cole.MVP, and uh, it's two players, Dong Rei Gu and Genius. But um, I think pretty soon here we're going to be announcing uh, we're actually going to extend that partnership to include all their players, and um, we're going to be doing business in Korea and the United States on a much deeper level. So we're very honored to be doing business with them and uh, very fortunate that we got it worked out. Great. Um, so for the past 10 plus years, the Korean scene has been isolated from the rest of esports. But right. Your, this move that you've made and recent moves have uh, sort of been colliding the two worlds. Yeah. I was wondering, what's your impression of the way that the two are coming together? You know, who benefits more from the fact that there's much more interaction now? Um, I think it's mutually beneficial on many levels. Um, I really was a bit surprised, to be honest, how the Korean scene is much more um, based on handshakes. And um, the Western scene is a little more cutthroat. Uh, I think we you know, saw that recently as there's been some controversies with Western teams interacting with Korean players. Um, I think we bring a lot of money to the table and a lot of uh, legal experience with how to deal with players on you know, contracts and things like that. And they bring just such a rich history of taking a young player and training him in a team house and really becoming like a family unit and practicing and going to battle every day. And, and I think when the two collide, if it's done properly, um, I think it can be very beneficial for both sides, and we're super excited about it. Is this the sort of thing, this sort of momentum, the sort of thing that can lead to parity with Korea in game and out of game? <laughs> in game, I don't know, man. <clears throat> um, I don't know if the West is going to be able to catch up for the next year, year and a half. I mean, you're going to have your exceptions like Huck um, and Nanawa and, and other people, but uh, 
on the average, I don't think Western players are probably going to catch the Koreans for some time. The way they practice and the dedication they put in and just completely like turning off your life and going hardcore into StarCraft is something that most Westerners just uh, aren't used to doing. Um, as far as out of game, I think in many ways we've already exceeded them. If you go to an MLG or you look at the streaming numbers or look at the prize money in the West versus what StarCraft II is doing in Korea, um, GSL is obviously fantastic and we all look to it as an example and a pillar in the esports community. But, I mean, if you look at the MLGs and NASLs and, you know, IPLs and all these leagues that are coming up just in North America, I think on many levels we've already exceeded them. I think you're completely right. I think in-game they're clearly ahead, but at a game they're looking towards, uh, towards us as far as pushing their business forward. Um, so Complexity has been very active lately, um, getting a <laughs> lot of new players, signing new teams. Right. So I guess the question is why this flurry of activity now? What makes now a good time to expand the brand and the personnel? Um, well, I could give you the politically correct answer, like a politician, or I could just tell you the truth. Um, <laughs> you know, people that don't know, I started, you know, like I said, in 2003, I started Complexity, and it was really a passion project. I poured hundreds of thousands of dollars of my own money. I could have bought a beach house or something into it. And then uh, when CGS came along, you know, they bought the brand from me. Um, I really believed in the direction they were going, and, uh, you know, at that point, it was either kind of get on that bus or they were going to buy out all, all my players anyway. So we rode that bus, and uh, it all went to hell in a handbasket when some good intent, well-intentioned but corporate suit-type people tried to change gaming and the spirit of gaming, and it crashed and burned during a bad economy. And that was really hard on me, man. I went out, and, you know, I'm quoted on videos saying, uh, you know, if this doesn't work, esports is dead. And, and, and unfortunately, I wasn't that far from the truth at the time when CGS – crash and burn the the scene especially in north america was just a train wreck and uh, that took a lot of emotional energy from me just like sucked it out and uh i was too damn stubborn <clears throat> to just let complexity die so we got the intellectual property back and went into business uh with a couple good friends of mine and um i just didn't have the heart for it like i was there but I had two young kids now. I'd invested so much of myself into complexity. And, you know, it's one of those things, like, you don't want to see it die, but I just didn't have the energy for it anymore. And I was just so burned out and so heartbroken and so disappointed with the way everything had turned out. And, you know, and then I lost my Counter-Strike team and that big drama. And I was just like, screw it, man. Like, my heart wasn't there. And, uh, you know, I was going through the motions and keeping the business open and, and – and working with my friends and uh, but my heart wasn't there and last uh, <clears throat> last fall Jason Bassett co-owner complexity said uh, Yo, you've got to try Starcraft 2 and I said I've never played an RTS it's not my gig you know I play Halo Reach every day with my son on the Xbox he goes you've got to try this game and I said well at least from a business perspective I have to play it a little bit so I can at least know what the hell I'm looking at and kind of recognize a good player from like a you know bad player and I got into StarCraft too, man. And um, last fall, I spent about three months playing that game. I, you know, I'm too damn old. I'm not that good at only a gold player. But I fell in love with StarCraft too, man. Uh, RTS totally surprised me. And uh, frankly, that relit the fire that had been out for a couple of years. And at the beginning of January, I called up Jason Bass when I got um, Christmas time. was just getting over. And I said, we're about to unleash a world of hurt. We're we're gonna bust a cap open right right now. And he's like, "What do you mean?" I go, "I got my fire back, dude." I go, six months from now, this organization is gonna be completely different. Everything top to bottom. I'm gonna reinvent it. We're just gonna go balls to the wall. And he's like, "Rock and roll, man. Let's do it." So you know, people that pay attention to such things and our old school fans that follow us, I think you can look back to January 1st of this year and look at us now, and we're completely re-energized. We're completely revamped. We're ready to kick ass, um, and it's a very exciting time. Um, so I think your career has been really well documented. Like you said, you've been <laughs> captured on film saying <laughs> esports is going to die and esports is going to be great. You know, um, books like Game Boys and everything right. has, has really gotten the ups and downs. Um, and right now you're saying you're, you're definitely in an up. You know, you're at, you're at a peak. And I guess the question is, with all the stress and the money that you've put in, 
has it been worth it? All the all the hardships you've endured uh, to get through esports. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Absolutely. You know, even the downsides were like. <clears throat> Sometimes you go after something in life with everything you've got and it blows up in your face and you're super bummed out, but you still have this feeling like in your heart, like, you know what? I gave everything I got and there's like a satisfaction in that. And esports for me has been and always will be um, an emotional connection, not just like buying stocks or, or running a typical company where sure you get a little invested, but Esports for me is about passion, man. It's about going downstairs and seeing 5,000 kids screaming. It's about people coming up and wanting an autograph on a mouse pad from some 40-year-old dude. Like, what in the hell? <laughs> you know, it's, it's about the excitement and it's about the love of gaming. And that's why for two years I was really just kind of going through the motions and working on other projects and falling in love with a new game. You know, like I said, relit a fire that was just kind of been out. And... Uh, it's a hell of a lot of fun. Has it all been worth it? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I was in Hollywood not too long ago at my wife's class reunion. I walk out of a very nice hotel in Hollywood, and some dude walking down the streets like, are you Jason Lake from Complexity? My wife just looks at me. She's like, Hollywood? Really? Freaking Hollywood, California? These people are like, you know, and, and it's, it's a really good feeling that, people kind of recognize you from the books or the documentaries or, or whatever and they might not necessarily like you but the majority of them at least respect like yo i might not like you but i respect what you've done i respect the time you've put in and you know it, it's a very good feeling yesterday at a at the pizza stand at the hotel some dude walks in wearing the old complexity jersey from like two years ago you know all the old sponsors and and stuff on there I just walked up to him like Dude, thanks for wearing our jersey. And he's kind of like, oh, he's like, what? And he's kind of looking at me, trying to figure it out. And I handed my card, and I said, "You get home, email me. I'm going to send you a complexity mouse pad." And then it like clicked to it. He's like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> and that kind of stuff, that you know, just one on one, gamer to gamer. It's like I love games, you love games. That's what makes it really special for me. You know, this has never been a, a money making enterprise, quite frankly. It's more like a labor of love and uh, a love for games, and. People that don't love games have come in this scene, you know what, and they always go. I can list dozens of people, few events, leagues, teams, whatever, but you know what, they're not here anymore. And there's a certain group, like I call us old timers, I was talking to Scoots from EG yesterday, joking about us old timers, like, we're not here for the money, we're not here for e-fame, we're here because we love games as much as the kids that are playing them. And... Um, I think as long as you've got that, this is a hell of a good place to be. As far as uh, you know, the fire being relit under you, what are some of the goals you have now um, for the brand and for the personnel? Um, there's no really fancy answer to that. You know, we want to do right, number one, by our fans and the people that stand by us and show up at events wearing jerseys. Um, you know, we we're down there giving out complexity jerseys to anyone holding up a complexity sign and. We just want to kind of give back because the fans are first and foremost. Without their support, without them clicking on our website, without them buying our sponsors' pro products, um, we're not here. Um, secondly is just to you know build the business. <clears throat> I often compare running uh, any kind of esports organization with StarCraft II. You've got your macro game and you've got your micro game. And um, if you're not good at your macro and sponsor relations and the basics of website and staff and the backbone of the organization. Even if you're super good at micro, bringing up players and, and working the political scene and all that, um, you're still going to fail. You've got to have the macro. You've got to take care of the sponsors that take care of you and develop corporate relations and, and, and handle public relations po properly and things along those lines. But once you get that macro down and you've got people around you that you trust, you can focus on the micro, which is the fun part. You know, hanging out with the gamers and uh, doing photo shoots and watching video games and uh, all the micro things that need to be done right. Um, but uh, yeah, we have we have big plans for for the next couple of years, and I'm I'm very happy to say, you know, with the support uh, primarily of of companies like Sound Blaster, um, we're not going anywhere. We're super happy to be here. Uh, you guys just recently picked up a Heroes of New Earth team, which is a game that's really making a, in the last you know week, a really making a big yeah. esports push. So with that in mind, what are your expectations for the team? Um, yeah, we're super excited about Heroes of New Earth. And the funny thing is the guy, uh, 
Detonator, who is their esports consultant and like the boss man over there, worked with Complexity, um, was my head of staff for years. So we have a very deep relationship with him, and uh, we've been looking at uh, at Han for a long time. And one of the benefits of being an old uh, old timer in esports is we usually find out information long before the public does. So sometimes we'll make moves and people will be like, "Why the hell did you do that?" And then the, you know the, pub the press release comes out a couple weeks later. We knew it was going free to play. Um, and we also know some other things that are going to really be exciting about Han. It's going to it's going to be a wonderful game, and uh, we're very excited about our team. We're very excited to be in the game. So you first got into uh, the esports scene with Counter Strike. Um, Hell yeah! <laughs> I guess I guess the question I don't know how to put it delicately. How do you how do you feel about the long decline? Especially oh man, it's so painful. <laughs> it's like watching you know I, I, maybe it's a, maybe it's not a very tasteful analogy, but it's almost like watching a family member die slowly of cancer. <laughs> that game, man, best video game ever. I mean, if it wasn't for Counter Strike, Counter Strike's what got me back into gaming because I'd gone through college and law school and I didn't really have time to game and I didn't game at all anymore. And when I when I stumbled upon Counter Strike, that was the game, the game that reminded me that I was a gamer. It was the game that reminded me how much I love playing video games, and uh, it really had legs, man. And you know, a lot of these kids that are coming in, being like, "Yay, esports, go esports!" They don't really appreciate the history of uh, of gaming, and that bothers me a lot. Um, as an old timer, it, it really bothers me that kids don't even really pay any attention to the history, the quakes and the counter strikes and, and the teams and, the, and the, some of the faces that have put in so much to get to where we are. They only, they think, you know, eSports started 12 months ago with StarCraft too. And, you know, it's very important. I mean, we have a player packet when players join our team and, um, you know, it details our entire history and all our policies on professionalism and everything. And there's a link to our movies. Uh, and last night uh, we had a business suite and our players in there and I put on complexity redemption. I'm like, you're going to watch this because you need to know where your roots are. You need to know where we come from. And uh, all the time on Reddit, I love Reddit. Um, kids are like, COL for complexity. That doesn't make any sense. You should change it. And I just write back. I'm like, welcome to eight years ago, dude. Are you, are you freaking kidding me? Change COL? And then they're like, I hate your logo. You should change this. Like, this logo was winning world championships while you were in seventh grade. Like, I'm not changing the logo. So it's frustrating sometimes, and part of that's just being a grumpy old man. Like I said, I'm an old timer, so you just got to laugh and be like, hey, these guys are in esports, and they don't give a crap about the history. But I know some of us old timers, you know, appreciate the guys, you know, that come up to you. Like I was uh, at a party last night, and these guys rolled in and, and were just like, holy shit, you know, your complexity, whatever. And I was just like, talking about Counter-Strike with them and it feels good when people actually take a moment to look back at, at our history because the old uh, you know <laughs> the old uh, adage goes uh, if you don't understand you know follow your history you're, you're gonna have no idea where to go in the future and I hope that some of these young leaders coming up these young managers and these young guys at esports websites like yours and others kind of look at the history and try to learn from the mistakes we've made and the right things we've done so going forward um, you know, we don't make the same mistakes again. Uh, you mentioned that you really love micromanaging, and one of the big differences uh, between Counter Strike and certainly StarCraft is, I mean, the iconic picture of you is you behind your team, at CPL, <laughs> kicking chairs, right? Red faced, <laughs> yelling, just loving I'm too every old second for that of shit. it. A second from a heart attack, <laughs> but. Now you can't really do that because right. the game's completely different. Um, does that does that change, miss change take anything away? Oh yeah, I miss it, man. Um, I'm a team guy. I was a football player, and uh, I'm a team guy. I like it's, it's a lot more work than one v one games, but I like the team dynamic. I like you know working with people to trust each other and working with people to build dedication and build loyalty and build work ethic and just. I like the whole team thing, so uh, that's definitely one thing that makes me sad about uh, the, you know the StarCraft scene. Is it's real one v one. I mean, we have a team atmosphere and they practice together, but when you go to war, it's one v one. You know, and uh, I miss that, man. I miss Counter Strike, and, and pray to God that uh, Valve pull, pulls their head out of their asses and uh, <laughs> makes us in Counter Strike two sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think uh, we all are with you there. Why don't you talk for a second about how uh, Complexity did this tournament? Um, we we're actually very pleased. You know, we'd made some moves, and uh, in Columbus we had nobody in pool play because we hadn't even picked up Root yet. And uh, we had three. We had Drewby, um, DRG, who we just picked up, and he's doing phenomenal. 
and uh, Cruncher. And Cruncher came through the open for the second time in a row. Last time he almost made it. This time he did make the pool play. He didn't do super good in pool play. But you come through the open, you know, you're still kind of burned out by the time you make it there. We're very, very proud of him and um, super excited about that. And uh, DRG's still going. He's probably going live here in a minute, actually. And um, we're very pleased on the average how we did. Uh, the Halo team started out a little slow, um, just like they did in Columbus. Played a lot better yesterday. Um, <clears throat> We're still working on that, and uh, Bravo's doing a great job. I think we're going to get to where we need to go. But this event's been spectacular. Can't say enough good things about what MLG's doing. I hung out with Sundance for about 45 minutes yesterday. And uh, the thing I love about uh, MLG and Sundance and Mike Sepso is there's been people that come into this scene and seeing, like, gold and dollars and, like, let's make 50 million bucks and retire to an island. These guys, of course, they're businessmen. they got to support their families. They want to make a buck here and there. But they, they love gaming, like straight up. Like They love sitting in the front row and freaking cheering and going nuts, and they love gaming. That's why it works. If you don't love gaming, you can be the smartest dude in the world and come into gaming, and it won't work out. CGS hired some of those brilliant sports minds and TV minds and strategists and everything else. But they didn't listen to the gamers, and they didn't really love gaming. And it's a perfect example of what happens. If you're in this business, love gaming or get out. All right. Uh, really, I think that's it. I really appreciate your time. I'll awesome. Back to DRJ. Thank you very much. i uh, just like to shout out and thank our sponsors, Sound Blaster, Creative, uh, PNY, Origin PC. Without you guys, uh, you know, we wouldn't get anywhere. And most importantly, I'd really like to thank our fans. Um, I know a lot of the old Counter-Strike fans have, have grown up and moved on, and, uh, you know, it's just a passage of time but we really like to thank you uh for sticking by us and the fire is back and complexity is going to be really exciting over the next couple of years so uh hop on the bus and enjoy the ride